Okay, where were we? I, uh, I left you with this uh, data set, and it's a data set, I think at this point you can just tell by looking at it that it's a, uh, this is a dipping layer reflection event, uh, this is the updip direction. It's updip because the apex is offset um, in this direction from the uh, origin, which is the location of the source. We can also see that the, uh, you may not actually see this in your data, but we can see that the uh, reflection event uh, terminates against the direct arrival at the surface. So that, that kind of tells us uh, also where the dip is. Uh, we aren't really concerned with the refraction data, so I've just shown the very uh, start of this uh, critically refracted event. And you were left with the problem of uh, taking this data and analyzing it and determining the uh, dip, the thickness of the layer, and the velocity in the uh, upper layer, the reflecting layer. You, you were assuming that you didn't have the direct arrival here, but you could certainly use this uh, direct arrival data to uh, uh, confirm your, uh, your findings. You can see that we have a delta T here of 0.05 and a distance of 150 meters. So you should be able to uh, uh, determine V1 and then compare that to what you get from the analysis of the data. Now we had these relationships. Uh, well, let me just ask that you, if you haven't done this, that you uh, take a moment, uh, pause the video, and try to figure out what the dip, the thickness of the layer, and the velocity uh, are. We do have these relationships that you can work with, so we'll just wait for you to do that. And now that you've done that, what did you find? So we derived these relationships previously, uh, you know, as we noted on the last slide, uh, the apex location, but I picked it here. You, you could argue, oh, no, no, it's, it's over here. Uh, so you can see, even with this noise-free uh, data set, this pure signal, very sharply defined uh, reflector, uh, no noise, we don't have a wavelet hung from the uh, uh, arrivals here. So very clean data, uh, should be very easy to pick the apex, but I'll pick a number, and I just bet that you're going to pick a different number. So we can see the apex location, we can see the intercept location, that would be our T0 here. Uh, for the apex, we have uh, two values, two coordinates associated with the apex. What we do with the intercept as well, but x is equal to 0 there. But uh, x apex is equal to 2h sine delta, t apex is equal to 2h cosine delta over v1. And you can see how I've picked them. I get about 33 for the apex, uh, 33 meters, and about uh, 0 0.024 seconds for T apex. For the intercept time, uh, I'm coming in around uh, 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 0 0.0265 or so. And uh, not sure what you got for that. Uh, these are the numbers that I got. I, I think maybe. Uh, when I originally picked this, it was a little bit too high. So that, that's going to change our results. We'll talk about error here in a minute. But uh, I got 33 meters for X apex, 0 0.024 seconds for T apex, and 0 0.0267 seconds for T0. So again, the question is, what did you get? And uh, here I'm just kind of working through the... Um, the analysis, uh, you can see that if we take the ratio of T apex to T0, uh, they both share this term 2h over v1. So if we divide T apex by uh, T0, we get rid of 2h over v1. We have T apex over T0 is equal to the cosine of the dip. So we can then calculate the dip just as the inverse cosine of T apex over T0. And then just kind of running through the uh, Arithmetic here, we get uh, the inverse cosine of 0.899, which gave me 0.454 radians, or about 
26 degrees for the dip. So we've got the dip of uh, 20 degrees here. We've got these two relationships here that we can uh, work further with. Now that we have the dip, we could we know what sine of delta is. We know what the cosine of delta would be. We don't know h. T apex includes three three variables, only one of which we know. Uh, in addition to the uh, observation, uh, this relationship here contains two variables, one of which we know. Uh, x is already we've we know what x is. We know what delta is. We can calculate h. Uh, h then is just equal to x apex over two sine delta. Using the numbers that I came up with, we have uh, 33 meters over two times the sine of delta, and I obtained 37.7 meters. So now we can easily solve for v1. We have this simple relationship here for the intercept. Uh, T0 is equal to 2h over v1, so we just rearrange that. We get v1 is equal to 2h over T0. This is equal to about uh, 2,821 meters per second. That's what I got. I would bet that you got slightly different numbers for the dip, the thickness of the layer, and the velocity. And that's what we'd expect uh, from working a problem like this. <coughs> Everybody's going to measure these locations uh, slightly differently. So these were my measured data over here, 33.024.0267. These were the actual in the forward model that I used to uh, calculate the response here at 33.81.0242.0266667 so the, this, this was pretty close here percent difference uh, about uh, minus 2.2 and a half uh, close to minus one just a little bit over just a small error there the um, <coughs> Cosine of delta, uh, delta that is obtained from the analysis uh, is 25.98. It was actually 25. That was the uh, dip used to generate the model. Uh, the thickness of the layer was 40 meters. Uh, I came up with 37.65. A velocity of 2,820 actual velocity 3000 and then you can see the errors here 3.8% uh, 6.2 6.4 uh, percent error and uh, now let's just take a look for a minute at Excel so here looking uh, in an Excel worksheet uh, we can get a feeling for the effect or the influence of uh, these different parameters. Let's say we these are the parameters that we get from the data. This is this is the basic data that we're using with to do the inverse problem. So if x x apex were 34, you can see that we we reduce our error. 34 is much uh, uh, much much closer to the uh, actual actual value in this case, and uh, the actual of 33.81. Uh, let's see, uh, 35 will increase it, 3.4%. Uh, let's go to 32. Let's see, a minus 5.7 or so. Now I came up with a 33. I'll put that back in there. 0 0.084. What do you think uh, the error will be on T apex? You can see that we have a less than a percent here. I was pretty close in this 1.024 seconds with an actual value of 0 0.0242 seconds. Uh, let's make this uh, 0 0.025. And you can see that I get 3.2% error. But look what happened to the velocity here. has to be much, much higher because we have a very small difference now between T apex and T zero. So I'll increase this even 
you know, kind of unreasonably further. Let's say like that. 0 0.0255 and you can see that the velocity goes up to um, uh, 4,170 meters per second. The error in T apexes is relatively small but this difference here gives a 28% uh, difference, 28% error in the derived uh, velocity. So I'll change that back to 0 0.024. You can see that actually we have, you know, we have a reasonably small error here. Um, but this is kind of worth, this is a, a, an exercise that is also worth pursuing that I could have asked you to do. You know, how would errors in these different uh, parameters influence uh, your results? And we have to be aware of that when we're picking, especially from real data. You know, this is model data. It's very precise. Uh, you may have read the numbers a little bit differently than I did. You probably did. I, I would hope you did. You know, I probably could have gone out to decimal places, uh, gotten a ruler out, measured this off a little bit more precisely. But if I'm off here and where I pick the apex, then uh, you know I'm going to get a I'm going to get a different number that's going to uh, propagate. That's an error that's going to propagate through the calculations. Why did the apex time have such a significant influence on the velocity? Well, you can imagine that if we move this point closer and closer, this apex closer and closer, closer and closer to the intercept, then this velocity has to become very high in order to get from the apex to the intercept over this distance. So it does make sense that if the, uh, think of it in terms of the difference between the apex arrival time and the intercept time, if that difference diminishes for a given x apex, uh, then the velocity has to be correspondingly much, much higher. So um, Measurement errors, uh, we're always going to have them. We're going to have more of them if we have real data. Um, I got these numbers. You probably got different numbers. Um, and uh, I hope this problem seemed fairly straightforward. Um, next time we're going to take a look. We've been looking at uh, these data sets plotted in T and X linearly. We're going to take a look at... Uh, these data sets when they're plotted in t squared x squared coordinates and take a look at the analysis of that data. So thanks again for joining us and hope to see you uh, hope to see you next time.